Matt Bernier with the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Monday, November the 19th. Race number seven from Mahoning Valley. Some big money on the line. This is six furlongs, $250,000 the purse for the Steel Valley Sprint. Before I dive into the field, I'd encourage you to head on over to drf.com slash bet, where you can get all the latest as far as details and offers are concerned for a new DRF Bets sign-up account. Again, drf.com slash bet is the address. Let's take a look at the field, a big full field of three-year-olds, 14 of them. They're going to be going six furlongs at Mahoning Valley on Monday. A lot of money on the line. Head on over to the Race of the Day page on drf.com. Download your free formulator pass performances. I'm going to rip through this thing as fast as possible because there's a lot of them in there. Let's start off with the number one, Cowboy Creed. Cowboy Creed, most recently, he ran in that Cherokee run that a number of horses are exiting from Churchill Downs. Audible was the winner that day. I think if you want a horse exiting that race, no disrespect to this horse, I think you probably want Honorable Treasure, who we'll talk about later on. Cowboy Creed will be coming from well off of the pace. The number two, Smokin' Nitro. Very, very interesting horse here for Jamie Ness. Anything he runs on, he's effective. Doesn't matter if it's turf, a wet track, a fast track, doesn't matter, you name it. But you know what his game is. It's speed. He's going to be sent out of there, and that could be problematic for a horse like this. Let's take a look at the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector. You can see they actually have Smoke and Nitro on the lead, but that red bar indicating a fast pace, and you can see he has some company from the four-horse Midwest Justice as well as the five-horse Wyattstown. I think this is going to be an absolute barbecue up on the front end. I think that could help a horse like Cowboy Creed and some other ones we'll talk about more momentarily. Smoke and Nitro, you can't knock a horse that's eight times of nine in the exacto with six victories. I just think, boy, a combination of facing better horses and, boy, that pace is going to get quite hot early on. We'll find out if Smoke and Nitro can overcome all that. Number three, Machismo. I actually picked Machismo to win the Bluegrass earlier this year, uh, and unfortunately he did not, and he was defeated by Good Magic, and we know what Good Magic was capable of on his best day. It seems like they sort of lost their way with this horse for a little while, but they got him back. Three starts back, sprinting. He ran just fine in a non-winners of two lifetime in an allowance race. Two starts back, he gets through that N2L condition on a fast main track. And then most recently, they ran him in the grade two Woodward, uh, Woodward, Woodford, excuse me, at Keeneland on turf, going five, eight, uh, five and a half furlongs. Look, the turf is not his game. He's over two thus far on that surface. I think there's a scenario where he'll get back to his best race here. The problem is his best race on paper is not fast enough, I don't think, to be competitive in a spot like this. I think Machismo is a nice horse. I think he's going to work at a decent enough trip. If you think that the speed is going to go, then he can tuck in sort of mid-pack. I just don't see a race on his page right now that would indicate that he is ready to go and ready to win a race like this. Maybe underneath, but I don't know about on top. Number four, Midwest Justice goes out for John Ortiz. Joe Bravo in town for the ride. Another horse. Every one of his victories to date, gate-to-wire fashion. He's another part of that big speed early on from a class standpoint. The runner-up in his most recent start, who he defeated by a neck, came back, earned an 88 buyer in the next start. So at least that form is holding up. This horse is going to need to improve, though, from a speed figure standpoint, and is also going to need to put away the other speeds and have something left in the tank for those horses coming from slightly off of it. Midwest Justice, if you think he can handle all that, he's going to be interesting at a decent price. Number five horse, Wyattstown, goes out for Norm McKnight. Eureka Rosa da Silva in town. They're coming in from Canada. This horse, ever since McKnight grabbed him, just done nothing but win races. He's been on an absolute tear. The problem is, you look, you see, he's never been out of the money in 10 lifetime starts. He's won all four of his races outright on the lead. And again, just adding to that pace situation, you do have a positive formulator fact, though, for Norm McKnight. Over the past four years, winner last out, 61 to 180 day layoff, 6 for 12. So he's batting 50% with a 230 ROI. I do think it is worth noting, look, the six wins, those are the only times that those horses have hit the board. Otherwise, they are nowhere. Wyattstown, I could see him being a very, very sort of classic case of win or off the board. But having said that, like I made mention earlier, he's never been out of the money in 10 lifetime starts. So he's going to be an interesting one to see how he handles going back from the synthetic back to the main track. He has had success, though, over basically anything that's been thrown his way, a fast main track, a wet main track, or even the synthetic surfaces. Number six is Trigger Warning. I've been a big fan of Trigger Warning really throughout this entire 2018 campaign. I think there is some legitimate talent in here. He's just been thrown to the wolves, and I think he's also been running at distances that are too far for him. I think he needs to go shorter. They tried shorter in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. He's just not to that level. He, he didn't show any of the early speed, or he couldn't run with the early speed. Uh, and you, But at the same time, you're talking about City of Light. You're talking about Seeking the Soul and, and some really, really talented horses. He's getting class relief, no question about that. 
The six furlongs, I'm not totally convinced that this is going to be ideal for him. I think this might be a hair on the sharp side. The good news is, if you think that the speeds go, and you think he sits mid-pack, he's going to have the bottom, he'll have the finish that some of these other horses might be sort of lacking at the end of this race. Trigger warning, I think this is an interesting spot. I won't be surprised if it's too sharp, but I do think he has a puncher's chance in a spot like this. The number seven, Bobby's Wicked One, goes out for Al Stahl. Whenever Al Stahl puts a horse in a stakes race, there's usually good reason. He doesn't do it willy-nilly. He throws them in when he thinks they belong. This horse really has done nothing wrong on the racetrack. Uh, he's only one of five lifetime, but you see that he's four of five in the money. Most recently, a solid second that was at Keeneland over a sloppy sealed racing surface. The winner that day came back and earned a 79 in his next start. The fifth place finisher a 77. From a speed figure standpoint, this horse will need to run something close to that run at Keeneland. But based on what we've seen from those horses exiting the race... There is a part of me that wonders if that number is a little bit on the high side. Perhaps it should be closer to sort of the low 80 range that he earned in that career debut when he broke his maiden back in November of 2017. Bobby's Wicked one, though, another one that should work at a decent trip if you believe that the pace is going to heat up. Number eight is Wells Crowther. This is a horse for Laura Wollers. Uh, unfortunately, plain and simple, on paper, this horse is too slow. Um, going to be outrun, no question about it, early on. That could also be problematic because the only victory to date came in gate-to-wire fashion. That was going a mile at Indiana back in June. The nine is K Choice for Ben Colbrook. Ben Colbrook, another trainer. Usually when he puts them in stakes races, it's because he thinks they belong. This horse broke the maiden most recently at Keeneland. Had a pretty hot pace to run at, sitting two or three lengths off of it. Came, made up the ground, got the job done drawing away. Uh, I don't think the distance will be a problem. I do question the class, though. Three starts, uh, the third place finisher that day at Keeneland. Came back and earned a 68 buyer in the next start. There's a part of me that wonders if this is a little bit too much too soon for a horse like this, but again, should work at a nice trip, should have plenty of pace to run at, and again, the distance I don't believe is going to be an issue for this son of Flatter. We move on to the number 10 horse, still having fun. Still having fun, won one of the big graded stakes races for three-year-old sprinters earlier this year, came from well off of a hot pace to win the grade two Woody Stevens on Belmont Stakes Day at Belmont Park. Since then, he's run three times. He hasn't run poorly. The finishes might look poor, but from a speed figure standpoint, he's running very, very respectably. In the low to mid-90s, if you think he gets pace, he's going to have something to run at. From a speed figure standpoint, if he runs something in that sort of low to mid-90 range, he's going to be right there at the wire. I think you have to respect his chances. Six furlongs, I'm not totally sold that this is going to be perfect for him. To me, he is much more of that 7 eights, one-turn miler, but... At the end of the day, if they go fast enough, I think it will be able to sort of set up for him. Coming from well off of it, that's the 10 still having fun. The 11 is Mr. Ashley. Mr. Ashley has two races on his page that I think are fast enough to win. They both happen to come at Indiana Grand. They came in July and August. Those couple 87 buyer speed figures, those that make him a fringe contender. Now, the problem is if you strip those two races from the PPs, he doesn't have anything faster than a 77. Plain and simple, that's not going to be fast enough to get it done. I think Connections would be thrilled if they could get a small piece of this big pie. Number 12 is Honorable Treasure for Kenny McPeak. Now, he's an interesting horse because, like I said, talking about that Cherokee run, I feel like he's the one that you probably want coming out of that race. And look, you didn't you, you were nothing for, for Audible. That's no big deal. We know what Audible is capable of and what he could end up ultimately being as a soon-to-be four-year-old. The concern I have with this horse, it's not that he has not run fast because he's done that a few different times. He's buyered over 95 on two different occasions. He's two for 13 lifetime, and both victories came at Saratoga. Is there a scenario where he is best used sort of underneath, and he's probably going to take a little bit of money based on the speed figures that he's got and the connections? There's a part of me that says, you know what, I think he's a legitimate threat in a spot like this, but at the same time, I don't know that I'd be banking heavily on him. I want to use him underneath and try to beat him for that top slot and for the top money. I think Honorable Treasure makes sense, but again, to me, better used underneath. And maybe he's a little bit of a Saratoga horse for course. We'll find out. The 13 is Smart Remark. Now, Smart Remark to me is a horse that I've always been a giant fan of. I think there is some legitimate talent here. From a speed figure standpoint, he's never buyered anything better than an 86. That came earlier this year in April at Keeneland in a race that was 7 eighths of a mile. This distance, I'm not sold. I think he's slightly better going longer. And to be honest with you, I think he's better on grass. We'll find out if they eventually do go back to the turf with him, but uh, he's a very talented horse for Vicky Oliver. I think he makes some sense in here. He'll get some pace to run at. I just, I'm not totally sold on six furlongs, and I do think he's slightly better on grass, despite the fact that two of his three victories have come on the main track. And we get to the outside horse, the number 14, Navy Commander. Now, Navy Commander has the fastest buyer in the most recent start in the entire field with a 97. Uh, that was an impressive victory, drawing off winning by over six lengths at Parks, uh, a raw time form U.S. rating of 123. You look at those 
coupled with the fact that he doesn't have to have the lead, he can sit off of a target and he's breaking from the far outside, in theory, he works out an ideal sort of situation. My concern is not so much with the trip, it's with that figure from that most recent race, because if you go through and you take a look, that 97 that he earned, I realize it was on a turn back in distance, and he is more, to me anyway, of a one-turn type of horse, whether it's six or seven or a one-turn mile, because the two-turn races, they're just not nearly as good as the one-turn races are. But, having said that, that 97 is miles, miles, the best race of his career. Same goes for the Time Form US rating. So the question now becomes, what happened? What led to that? There, I don't see any sort of real equipment change. I don't see anything different from a running style standpoint. If you believe the figure, he's a prime contender. If you look at it like I do with a little bit of side eye and say, how did he go from a horse that was in sort of the low 80 range to all of a sudden the upper 90s? Don't know that I want to find out. Now, again, it ultimately it comes down to your price. If he goes off a 10 to 1, then sure, I'll take a chance. But if he goes off in that 3 or 4 to 1 range, I'm going to look at that 97 and say, prove it to me that you are actually that horse now at this point in your career. Again, it's a phenomenal race for a Monday. Really nothing that you can that you can knock about this race. This is the Steel Valley Sprint. It's the Monday DRF Bets race of the day. Let's take a look and see ultimately where I landed. Yes, I'm a bit of a fanboy of Trigger Warning. I think Trigger Warning is a nice horse. I don't know about the six furlongs. It might be a little bit on the sharp side for him, but he should get some pace. He is certainly getting class relief from facing the likes of City of Light to facing this group of three-year-old horses. Uh, we'll find out about the distance. I think he's going to get a good setup, and he might be a, a fair price in here. He might be in that seven or eight to one range. I'll take a shot with him. I'm going to go six, seven, 10, 12, and what looks like on paper a very, very fun race and a very, very fast race as far as the pace is concerned. In the seventh at Mahoning Valley on Monday, it is the Steel Valley Sprint, the DRF Bets race of the day. If you're playing this race from Mahoning Valley or any of the other races, DRF Bets is the way to do it. Head on over to drf.com slash bet where you can look and see all the latest as far as details and offers are concerned for new DRF Bets sign-up members. Schedule post time for the 7th at Mahoning Valley on Monday, the DRF Bets race of the day, 3.08 Eastern. Good luck.